where do we want to start? I think we want to start here. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 30, Concatenate. In today's episode, we set out to work further with Void Story. In particular, we updated the annotation. There was a place where we had done um, transposing. And those cadences, when they were transposed, actually uh, had slightly different harmonic functions. So for example, ambivalence turned into a driftance. So it went from clash to kind of float. And then uh, statens went to a half cadence. So it went from rest to urge. Otherwise, they were the same. So we learned uh, an important lesson from that, which is that by transposing cadences, we can sometimes generate different energy stories from the same figures just by pushing them up a couple half steps. Another thing we realized, it's, that we're talking about this score over here, is that by adding a passing note line down here, you see these this row is all passing notes. Um, it says so right there, passing. By doing that, by adding a B to the A and the F, we get a different chord than this chord. So we're adding a second implied chord on top of the cadence chord, which is a neat technique. So we did all that. Um, we made a video of the updated annotation. And then the fun thing is we also went ahead and started experimenting with adding timbres. So you may remember everything was piano on this, but now we've changed it to have an, uh, clarinets and uh, marimbas. It now sounds like this. <laughs> So that's kind of cool. We, we happen to personally like clarinets because we played clarinet growing up. Uh, and clarinet choirs are kind of a standby of um, uh, bands compared to orchestras. Clarinets take the place of violins. Here we have the oboe coming in. And if you listen, you hear the B flat clarinet with the syncopated backbone. And it's coming in and it's just kind of making a, you can't hear it so well on the piano, but here you can hear it. So that was kind of neat. So we did all that and we went ahead and we updated the animation we made a video of it. However, we feel like we still need to do some more work with it because in some places the the chords are a little too loud, we think, a little too loud. Um, I think where we think that, where do we think that? We think it's like around here, it's kind of too loud. That's a little bit too loud. Then when we get into the frantic section, it's not so bad because they're pianissimo. So that works. And then we get to the, you know, the the big build here. The big build comes in around here. So the clarinet's okay. That sounds kind of cool, to be honest. The little uh, staccato oboe on top of the building clarinet chords. <laughs> do, 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 which you can don't quite hear as clearly in the piano version. So we had a lot of fun with that. A lot of fun with that. Um, and then fine, oh, we'd also, we made a technical post because we really like that this composition uh, here, this one, 
So we made a what we call a technical post uh, out of uh, kind of featuring the featuring. You don't have to see it full screen to see it. We we posted the animation, but underneath it we showed here is the theory associated with note functions. Here is the actual scale, the C two three three two five five eight. And here is the actual reference score. So this is a reference to go with this. So we do that periodically, and we're glad we did it this time. So we did that. And then, and then finally, we got back to working on our new scale, C4554. And this turned out kind of cool. We made a quick improvisation, which, which you heard a little bit of when we started the recap. And the cool thing about the working with the improvisation is uh, making a, it gives us a quick start with something to feel good about, the closure of an arc, and it gives us a quick something to hear, which gives us a working knowledge of the scale, how the scales and chords are interconnecting. And in this case, we identified four recurring uh, interval seven figures down here. We're going to play this all for you, but just to give you an idea. So here. So we wanted that rhythm. That's a lyric rhythm from contraction, beat, thumbs, loss, beat, etc. So, so we did all that. And then, and then we match cadences. So this is what I mean by an improvisation gives us a quick start and gives us something good to feel about. So what we're going to do is play this full improvisation for you, and then we'll that'll take us home. So here we go. So that ends today's stream. What we really like about this improvisation, in addition to what we already covered, is it seems incredible that these four simple interval seven figures, dum, da, da, dum, dum, da, da, which sounds cool. I mean, that's a great interval. Uh, and, and there's four of them in this scale, If when you look at the DNA. But then when you throw them on top of the chords, they totally transform. They, it, it's a whole different feel. And then we actually did, if you looked at the cadences, we have a statens, which is a restful energy. Then the second line is ambivalence, which we call as clash or uh, dis-ease. Then another clash, dis-ease. And then we go from that and come back to a statens. So it closes. And so by adding those chords, to those dyads, it just totally gives a different feel. And it builds. It's just, it seems amazing. So our ideas for next time are to adjust our timbres further over here on the, the clarinet choir bit uh, to make an, uh, and then coming back to the 4554, five, four, make an animation for it. And then we, we do have lyric ideas for this. Dum, da, da, dum. So, uh, and then our good old friend, to be determined. 
So thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. A shout out to Jinxus for stopping by. Uh, do come back. Do take care. And do keep on streaming. <laughs>